First things first, I want to apologize for this post-game video coming out as late as it is, ladies and gentlemen. I had to bust out a night shift. So again, I apologize for that, but let's go ahead and waste no more time. YouTube, what's going on? It's Juan Gotti here. We have the Washington Commanders video. And in today's video, I'm coming on here with my post-game recap of the Washington Commanders beatdown of the Carolina Panthers as we disposed of them in a blowout fashion, 40-7. to In a game that had some ups and downs. In a game for a point in time where... Washington Commanders fans lost all hope. I don't know for you and how you felt, but I was distraught. <laughs> when Jaden Daniels went down, man, oh, man, I, I just, I was upset. I was sad. I was frustrated because I was like, man, come on, dog. Not like this. Like, all of our season expectation went up in the air because we didn't know the status of Jaden Daniels at the time. Now, obviously, Jaden Daniels, he suffered a rib injury today. And you kind of saw it happen on, on the run plays that he had. They were a little funky on the big run that he had. He kind of got twirled and, 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 and twirled up and, like, you know, his leg kind of got buckled under him. So I, I thought it was the knee at first. Thank God it wasn't. Um... And then he, he took another shot where uh, I believe that's the play where he injured his rib on. Um, he At first, he did not want to come out of the game, but then he felt some discomfort, so he had to come out of the game. He um, tried to throw, and he immediately realized there was nothing going on good right there, so he had to come out of the game. He slammed his helmet on the, on the bench, and I was just like, uh-oh, man, here we go. Because if it's anything broken, fractured, any of that nature, our season is cooked. Our season is done because I have no faith in Marcus Mariota. Now, he showed me something today, but who am I kidding? It's Marcus Mariota. It's not sustainable. We're back to square one if we have no Jaden Dyers. Jaden Dyers is literally our season, guys. Like, that is literally our franchise. He goes down, we're cooked. So, when he went down... Marcus came in, it started off shaky. Marcus didn't really, wasn't settled. He was getting sacked. He was missing Deami Brown wide open. I was just like, man, where's Jeff Driscoll at? I immediately asked, where's Jeff Driscoll? Because I want Jeff Driscoll as QB2 anyway, to be honest with you, over Marcus Mariota. Um, for the simple fact that I just don't think highly of Marcus Mariota at this point of his career. And he also has a big health concern. Remember, he started the season on IR. And given the fact that he started the season on IR, that 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 uh that read option that he took a hit on late, come on, Marcus, you got to protect yourself, bro. Because if you get hurt, then we down to Jeff Driscoll. Even though that's what I would prefer over you, we got to stay healthy. Now, uh, a good sign about that is Jaden Daniels' mother was on Twitter and said he's fine. Now, um, a, a lot of fans were happy about that. Some other fans was like, with all due respect, ma'am, I got to hear from the medical staff, you know, for the further evaluation on, on what's going on with him. And then I could, you know, breathe and relax. When I saw Jaden Daniels trot back out there and he was smiling and he did this um, on the Ben Simmons touchdown, I was like, okay, we, we, we may be good. We may have dodged a bullet because I don't think if you have – damaged ribs that are really banged up you can be able to do this i feel like you would feel that right here in the rib cage so um that gives me some hope we're getting further tests tomorrow hopefully it's positive test that we get back and it's nothing uh uh serious and we get positive tests and news back from dan quinn because he doesn't have anything for us at the moment us fans all we can do is speculate until tomorrow morning when he gets his x-rays and etc so we're just on pins and needle waiting for a word from uh from dan quinn but it, it looks positive uh i was told that he gave a reporter a thumbs up that he was good to go um but at this point we all can just speculate now Speedy recovery for JD5, we're going to need him. We need him. Again, the offense, it didn't look too different with uh, Jaden Daniels being out, but we know it is completely different with him being in there. Like, as far as the scheme and how it's ran isn't different, but the playmaking ability, the, um, the, th the throwing of the ball, the decision-making, the the um, just everything is just different with Jaden Daniels. Like, I don't want to necessarily just discredit Marcus Mariota completely because he's able to run this scheme 
to to um to to uh, an efficient level, but it's just not Jaden Daniels. Like Jaden Daniels isn't missing that throw to Deami Brown across the middle of the field. If Jaden Daniels plays in this game, we win. By we we put up sixty. Jaden Daniels has five touchdowns today. Like we had, it's that kind of day, and that's what I was really really hoping for headed into the big matchup versus the Chicago Bears. But unfortunately, we did not get that. Now. This is another week where we're going to have to see Jaden Daniels face adversity and have to bounce back. Last week, you know, he, he uh, had some plays that he would want back. Uh, you know, in Arizona, he threw a pick. He faced adversity. He came back, right? So, we're, he, in, in the game versus the Browns, he, he threw a pick. He came back and looked really good. Now, we get to see him facing an injury like he did versus the Giants. He he had another, um you know, a shot where he lost the win of him. He came back. He looked really good after that. This is another shot that we get to see him face somewhat of adversity. How is he going to look when he comes back versus the Chicago Bears if he, in fact, comes back versus the Chicago Bears? Leave it down below in the comment section while we're at it. How confident are you in Marcus Mariota if he, in fact, has to play next Saturday, Sunday versus the Chicago Bears? Are you confident? I know a lot of people want to say the Bears, say a lot about the Bears, but one thing I will say about the Bears is that they have a really good defense. And Marcus Mariota looked good against Carolina, but... The Bears' defense is totally different. I honestly, if Jaden Daniels can't play, I don't know how confident I am in our ability to get the victory. Like I don't just rule us out completely, but I just know Marcus Mariota is gonna be due to be to show us that he's Marcus Mariota at some point. Whether it's a turnover, fumble, interception, um, you know, missed pass, injury, some of them other sort is gonna happen the longer he plays. So I just hope he doesn't have to play anymore. And that was just him playing for the rest of the game versus Carolina and Washington can get our quarterback back next week. Now I know I'm ranting about that, but that's just the big takeaway from today's game is just the health of Jaden Daniels and hopefully hoping that he's fine. His mother came out and said that he's fine. But again, further tests we'll see how we'll see the status of him. Um, tomorrow. Um, now moving to the actual game itself. Let me first start by saying this. Emmanuel F. And Forbes scored a pick today. How about that? Now, this is a game where we're supposed to be shadowing that. We're supposed to be making that the main topic of the video. Emmanuel Forbes getting the interception. But unfortunately, due to the injury of Jay Daniels, that has overshadowed that. How about Dante Fowler today? Getting a pick six, getting a couple sacks. Frankie Louvu coming off the edge, getting sacks himself. Deron Payne all of a sudden just wakes up now that he doesn't have Jonathan Allen next to him. We look good today. And I again, I, I know it's Carolina, but we did what we supposed to do to inferior teams. In years past, we will face this very same Carolina team and go toe to toe with them and barely beat them 23 to 15 getting out of there with a victory today we wasted no time 40 to 7 on a team where we were missing our first our, our franchise quarterback for the majority of the game if Jaden daniels plays it's 60 on the board okay um but I'm so happy for Emmanuel Forbes. Y'all know, y'all know how I feel about Emmanuel Forbes. I give him the business, man. And, and it comes from a place of disappointment because one, I'm disappointed in the last regime for drafting him that high because clearly at this point in his career, he he's not a first round pick. And I'm also disappointed in him just because he's not simply that. He's not. He hasn't been that. He hasn't been good up until the interception today. Now I don't want to necessarily say the interception makes him good. I'm not gonna sit up here and actually just 180 flip on him. But I'm happy for him because I want to see him be good. That's why we're so hard on him as content creators and fans because we want to see him be good. It's not like we are banking on him to be bad. And I'm coming on here saying, I told you so. I knew he was going to be bad. I'm happy that he's bad because, no, I'm rooting against my team at that point. I would much rather be wrong about a player and he's good that helps out my team than then be right about a player being trash and then my team suffer because of that. I'm a fan of the Washington Commanders, not a fan of Juan Gotti being right about players being trash. Like, no, I'm a fan of this right here. So... It, it, it had to feel good for Forbes, you know, from going from being inactive last week to playing four snaps before then. I hope this is the start of something. I hope this gives him the confidence that he needs to get, uh, that he needed to go out there and play better. I really want him to pan out. I really do. Because we need it. Like, even all jokes aside, 
oh Forbes is trash this or Forbes is good this Forbes is this is this good it's not him it's the coaching or Forbes is trash man get him out of here all that aside as Washington Commanders we need cornerback help so what more would it be better than our first round pick panning out instead of us having to talk about getting JC Horn getting JC Jackson working out um Cal Fuller no we shouldn't have to do that we should have a cornerback in the first round that Manuel Forbes being our first round cornerback so hopefully he that this is the start of something special with him how about mike sanford still somebody brought this up earlier when i was listening to my man's louis t um post game show someone brought up the fact that mike sanford still looks good as a boundary corner more so than a slot not to say that he's that he's not a slot corner or that he's not good in the corner but i think a lot of people underlooked his ability to play the boundary because they were so sold on his impact at Michigan in the slot. He looks dang good as a, as a boundary corner. How about that? Okay? What if Mike Sanford still, for all intents and purposes, Mike Sanford still is our outside corner that we've been missing? What if... I like Noah Iganogany in the stock. What if that's the slap? What if that's how we needed to play this the whole time? You know, you have a mixture of St. Jude slash Forbes... Okay, more so St. Juice at this point, but maybe again with the pick for Forbes that he had today, maybe this is the turning point that he needed. What if Mike Samra still was our cornerback one this whole time? What if we needed him as the cornerback one boundary the whole this whole entire time? You slide Noah Eganogany inside, and you and you got a heavy dose of St. Juice and a little bit of Emmanuel Forbes at times. What if that's the combination that we needed to run this whole time? That could be something. Okay, I hope Joe Witt Jr. continues to explore Mike Sanford still on the outside um, because uh, I think a lot of fans are starting to see that he can play uh, on the boundary just as good, if not better, than he does in the slide at, th at this level in the NFL, which is, in my opinion, much better because we need the boundary help at this point. I'm not saying that you could just go out and find a slot with ease because that's not the case, but if you ask me, what we've, what's been suffering the most is the outside cornerbacks, the boundary cornerbacks, the cornerbacks checking the number one star receivers on teams, not the inside, not not the slot receiver, not not you know, the, the inside guy. It's it's always been the boundary corner or boundary receivers for us this year. How about having Brian Robinson back today? Brian Robinson bringing that physicality back today, having 71 yards on the ground. Um, he he means so much to this offense. Again, that's why I said last week he him missing last week's game is the reason why we lost. And I'm standing on that. A lot of people kept trying to say, no, it's the defense fault that we lost. In my opinion, it's not because the defense gave up 30. 30 plus points before multiple times this season and we still found a way to win because our offense was just that good well our offense was missing one of our best players last week and we lost because of that in my opinion because let's say brian robinson plays last week it adds a different physicality edge to the team we we convert in the red zone instead of settling for three. We um we go for it on different occasions instead of settling for three or or, or punting. He adds a different kind of versatility and, and physical edge to the scene that has been missing. The defense could have gave up 30, but we would have scored 30 plus if Brian Robinson was there last week. So him being back was huge because we need him. He opens up the game so much more, not even just for the ability to run the ball from him. But for whatever reasons, it just seems like Jeremy McNichols plays better. Austin Eckler plays better when Brian Robinson is there and everyone is in their respective roles slash positions. It just feels different when he's out there. So having him back was a huge plus. How about Ben Sennett getting his first touchdown today, man? That is such a great feeling. I know it had to be for him because a lot of fans have been questioning where has he been this season? He was supposed to be, you know, our Kyle Juszczyk. He was supposed to be involved into this offense heavily um, coming out of college, and he really hasn't been much. But how good had that had to feel for him to get his first touchdown on the season? Um, then you go over to Terry McLaurin, just two yards shy of 100 yards. I was so pissed when I saw it. I was like, no, we couldn't have got Terry two more yards. Are we kidding? Come on. But Terry McLaurin, leading receiver today, um, another good day from him. He continues to stock on good performances, and he continues to show you, man, that he is one of the ones at the receiver position. He just needed a quarterback all along, and he finally has that quarterback, and uh, 
he's happy, and, and and I'm happy because my man's finally got what he's been missing since he's got into the league. Um, who am I missing? I felt like Zach Ertz had a really good day today. Uh, I felt like uh, we were running the ball really well today from all three backs. Um, the protection was solid. I know Tyler Biotis got a little banged up. He came back with a wrap on his hand, so hopefully that's something too serious. I think Brandon Coleman also exited this game today, if I'm not mistaken. So hopefully we're not too banged up, especially having this big game versus the Chicago Bears next Sunday. We need all hands on deck for that game. So... Hopefully we're fine on that end. Um, Dante Fowler again, what a game. Dexter, or excuse me, uh, Frank Louvel, what a game. Uh, Deron Payne woke up today, looked really good today. Um, who else looked really good? Obviously, Mayo Forbes with the pick. Mike Sammer still looking really good. Uh, we just overall just dominated today, and again, it's Carolina. What what did what else did we expect to happen? Um, but it just more so gets to show you that we're a good team. Even when Jaden Daniels goes down, we're still able to beat teams, and um, uh, beat teams by 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 a uh, a lot. Okay, because at a point in time, I'm not gonna lie to you. I thought when Marcus Mariota came into the game, that it was all of a sudden going to turn into a game that was close a game that um could have been a, a potential uh shootout because Marcus Mariota was gonna Marcus Mariota but he didn't um we held defensively held Andy Dalton to 93 yards and two picks on the day Bryce Young came in negative four yards Chuba Hubbard only had 52 yards on the ground on 17 curries um Miles Sanders three curries for 34 yards Xavier Leggett one rush for six. Their leading receiver was Javion Sanders, six for 61. They Deontay Johnson, one for 17. I don't know, man. Maybe Washington makes a move for Deontay Johnson. Maybe make a move for J.C. Horner. Uh, maybe Garrett Wilson. I know that's a long shot, but he looks a little disgruntled there in uh, New York. And they lost it again tonight. So we'll see, man. But uh, Washington, man, what, what another dominant win. Um let me see who am I missing for the stat sheet. Uh, De'Ami Brown could have had a way bigger day. If I feel like if Jaden Daniels plays, he has like two, one or two touchdowns today. Uh, Noah, uh, Noah Brown drew another pass interference. He he always is, is drawing the pass interferences, man. I, I love Noah Brown in addition that he's had today. Um, let's see. My man, uh, Dante followed with the pick six. That was amazing to start off the the uh, the game. Let's see who else uh, got in today. My man, F.A. Obata was back today. Looked good. Looked good. Coach Hankoff even got in there, got in some action. Uh, it was just overall a good day all over the board. And um, Austin Seibert, four for four on his field goal attempts, uh, which is good. His longest was forty nine today. Um, one thing I will say. It's Cliff. We we got to be better in the red zone, Cliff. I know we scored 40, so you're probably like, How, why did you come up with that? No, we do, though. We do. Um, Cliff, he got a little too sexy in the red zone. I think we just need to keep it old-fashioned. Brian Robinson, especially, he's back in the backfield today. Hand it off to him in the red zone. You know, come up with something simple. We don't got to get too cute. Well, line up under center, single back, bootlegs, tight end or something, or the full back rolling out, you know, easy little pitch and catch. We don't got to get too cute in the red zone. And that's why I feel like a part of our red zone efficiency has been so low is because we try to do too much because the field is condensed. But I think if we just go out there, play our game, run the ball, you know, make it simple, make it easy. We can turn these threes into sevens, man. That's just my honest opinion, and that's my only gripe with Cliff at this point is just the the red zone efficiency. We can be much better in the red zone, if you ask me. Um, but other than that, man, we've been we've been we've been we've been good, and I have no complaints at all. It's just more so worrying about JD's health. Hopefully he can get back healthy, um, and hopefully he doesn't miss no time because we have a big game versus the Chicago Bears next week. We're five and two; they're four and two. Um, they're coming off the bye week. They had they're in a dog division. The Lions won a day. The Packers won a day. So they're gonna they're gonna come with their A game, man. Bears fans are pissed off. They're upset. They're they're more worried about our quarterback than they are their own quarterback. They're pissed off because Caleb Williams doesn't win Offensive Rookie of the Year. They don't understand or comprehend the fact that it's a fan voted award. So their fans have to vote for their quarterback. It's not our fault that we're constantly voting for our quarterback. So um, they have a lot of animosity towards us. Bears fans hate us, man. They want this one bad because they want to prove so badly that Caleb Williams is better than Jaden Daniels. And Jaden Daniels is not good. We have a bear. We had a Bears fans call Jaden Daniels the system quarterback today. They're 
pissed. They want this one bad. And you would think we want this one bad because they embarrassed us last year at home on Thursday Night Football, but they want this one bad for, in my opinion, the wrong reasons. They don't even want to win to win. They want to win to prove that Caleb Williams is the better quarterback or win to prove that that Jaden Daniels isn't good, which I don't understand. They both can be good, and we can both go our separate ways after Sunday and be be happy with our quarterbacks. Like, in my opinion, bro, it's not that deep. We're just dragging about JD5 because he's been having the better season and he's been winning all these Offensive Rookie of the Year, Offensive Rookie of the Week awards. It's going to be a shootout. Hopefully our quarterback is healthy. Hopefully we, 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 we can play with him on Sunday because we are going to need him in this game versus the Bears. But before I get out of here, I want to let you guys do, do me a favor. Use my promo code WANGADI on Seeking to get $20 off your first purchase. Shout out to Daryl Green for getting uh, elected today. You know, Jersey retirement, deserving, best Washington player in franchise history, if you ask me. 20 years strong. Who else could you go with? Shout out to Daryl Green. Uh, wonder if he can play some corner to this day. But make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. As always, been your boy Juan Gotti. Washington Commanders get the victory. 40-7. to Biggest news and storyline from this game is Jaden Daniels' health. Left the game with a rib injury. Hopefully, he is okay. Mom's confirmed that he's fine. But we're going to wait tomorrow until the doctor gets in there and we get the final word. Coach Dan Quinn. Yeah, have a blessed one. Stay safe. Be easy. Have a great night. See y'all later. Mom. Peace.